my entire working life working for the BBC, news, documentaries, science, and nuclear waste was a living nightmare. I've worked on many films that have said this. Every piece of nuclear waste made in every power station in Britain is still in a cooling pond. And there's no solution to that long-term problem. It's a disaster waiting to... Well, it turned out that Britain actually came up with a very interesting solution to the problem of high-end nuclear waste. Let's turn it into weapons-grade plutonium and make money. And they did it at this place. No, not my house. This place. The Thorpe Reprocessing Plant at Sellafield combines all the facilities necessary for reprocessing spent uranium oxide fuel under one roof. The construction of Thorpe was one of the world's most complex civil engineering projects, employing up to 5,000 contractors on site and supporting a further 10,000 with suppliers and subcontractors. Construction began on the Thorpe Head End and Chemical Separation Plants in 1985, and the first fuel was sheared in 1994. Thorpe's operations are divided into three main areas. Fuel receipt and storage. Head end plant operations, where spent fuel is chopped up and dissolved in nitric acid. And chemical separation, where uranium, plutonium and waste products are separated out. After three to four years in a reactor, nuclear fuel becomes less efficient, so is removed. 97% of the used fuel can be recycled to produce new fuel. 96% uranium, 1% plutonium. The rest is nuclear waste. Transport flasks containing used fuel from the power stations are delivered by rail to the Setterfield site. Overseas customers' fuel is delivered to Barrow in Furness on purpose-built ships. On arrival at Sellafield, the fuel is removed from the transport flasks under water and stored in storage ponds to allow the fuel to cool before reprocessing. The Thorpe Receipt and Storage Facility comprises two separate ponds, 8 metres deep, with a total storage capacity of about 3,000 tonnes. The empty flasks are sent for cleaning and maintenance before being returned to the power station for another consignment. Once the fuel has cooled, it is monitored and transferred from the storage pond to the head-end plant shear cave, where the fuel is chopped into sections. The fuel drops into a basket in a dissolver vessel where the fuel is dissolved in nitric acid. The fuel cladding remains in the basket. The dissolved fuel liquor is forwarded to the chemical separation plant within Thorpe, where solvent extraction takes place to separate the 3% wastes from the 96% uranium and 1% plutonium. The wastes from this process are sent to the high-level waste plants for concentration, storage and eventual conversion to glass. The uranium and plutonium are converted to oxide powders and stored. Both the uranium and the plutonium can be recycled and manufactured into new uranium oxide or mixed oxide, MOX, fuels. Sellafield, where they've spent millions and millions of your taxpayers' money, if you're British, reprocessing very high-end nuclear waste and turning it into weapons-grade plutonium. Sellafield is one of the very few nuclear reprocessing plants in the world. And they bought other country stuff to also turn it into weapons grade plutonium. And too much plutonium is a big issue. But first of all, you have to understand that there's different types of nuclear waste. So Britain has a way of actually dealing with the really nasty stuff. The stuff that would kill you with gamma rays almost instantly. Well, I mean, sh pretty quickly. And then at the other end of the spectrum, there's something called low-level nuclear waste. That's kind of old rags, bits of spilt oil, broken bits of machinery, scrap parts. It turns out that that isn't so bad. You can actually put it in a steel drum. Pour some concrete around it and it's pretty shielded. Most of the radiation is going to be alpha and that's going to be stopped by a tin can. Beta, well, you need a good shield, so a bit of concrete and there's hardly any gamma rays. A bit, but that's the stuff that you can pretty well put in a quarry somewhere. But that leaves two terrifying aspects to nuclear waste. The high-end stuff is being reprocessed. The low-end stuff you can store pretty safely. It's the stuff in between. The so-called intermediate nuclear waste. It produces beta and gamma rays. You don't want to be anywhere near it. And there's a lot of it. You can't really reprocess it. You can stabilize it, but it's so expensive. 
it's the intermediate nuclear waste that does need the secret long-term storage in a place like Glen Sander, I hope not, for tens of thousands of years. And the UK government confirmed that. They are actively looking for geological storage solutions. No doubt a big granite hole called Glen Sander must be on their future agenda. So, nuclear waste isn't a problem. No, it's actually a living nightmare. It turns out that Sellafield is jolly good at making weapon-grade plutonium. One report I read is that the UK has more high-end weapon-grade plutonium than any other country. They could produce too low to meet a free electricity for everybody for hundreds of years using it. And it's piling up. This is the plutonium storage at Sellafield. They've got hundreds of tons of it. What are you going to do with it? With the current nuclear bomb limitations, possibly going to be undermined by Russia, Britain can only possess a known number of warheads to fit on the Trident missiles. What are you going to do with the rest of the plutonium? I seriously worry that Britain's plutonium mountain will become a nightmare. So, what do I know? Absolutely nothing. What do you know? Absolutely everything. You probably work at Sellafield. You work for BNFL, British Nuclear Fuels Limited. You know about nuclear reprocessing. Fantastic. Get in touch, share what you can, non-classified, so we can actually have an intelligent, non-biased report. Forget what the media are telling you about nuclear waste. It's actually much more of a problem than they know about. So wonderful viewers, you get my drift. This is just the story that I like digging into and investigating on your behalf and with you. Because of you, the truth is out there.